Hello and welcome back and in today's video we'll be making the electric effect from the previous video to interact with stuff that you have in the scene like you see here. And before we get into the video, I've updated the electric effects pack on my Gumroad with uh, these three of these interactive effects from this video. So if you've already got it, it's a free update. If you haven't, you can check it out if you like something like this. So let's just go ahead and jump into the video. So if you've watched the previous video, you can see the setup that I have here looks a bit different and it's just a bit rearranged to have things be a bit more compact. So I have here three empties um, and if I hit play, you can see that two of them are animated. The empty pointing upwards is used to animate the first displace modifier to introduce this kind of motion. And the second empty pointing to the bottom is used to animate the detail in the axe. And I find that playing around with the strength of these two empties can give a very um, stylized look to this whole effect. So you can play around with this, um, these settings here in your modifiers to get uh, different types of, of looks. And then the empty in the center is just, everything is parented to the cube empty so that it can be easy to just grab and move everything around. And yeah, that's that. If you want to see in detail how I went setting about all, all this, you can check out the previous video if you haven't seen it. So we'll use the hook modifier to get these uh, branches to interact with stuff in the scene. So to do that, I'll just say select uh, for this arc here, for this branch, I'll go into edit mode. And first I'll just disable the modifier stack so we can see better what's going on. I'll go into edit mode and place the 3D cursor at the tip of this branch and then add an empty uh, and I'll use a sphere and reduce its size a bit. And then with the sphere select, with the empty selected, I'll select the object and go into edit mode and then select the branches that I want to be influenced by this specific empty and say somewhere up to there. And then just hit control H and hook to select to selected object. So now if you select your empty and move it around in the scene, you'll see it's pulling along all those vertices. So that's working. But if you recall, in the next step, we want to edit the shape of these branches in edit mode to have those different erratic shapes. And right now, if you go into edit mode and say, try to move around uh, these selected branches, it's leaving behind that empty and that's not what we want. But if you, what you can do is um, select the object and then go into edit mode, select the empty. I mean, select the empty and then parent the empty to one of the vertices here at the tip. So control P and make vertex parent. So right now, if you select and move around this branch, you'll see it's pulling along um, the empty. So that's working. But if you enable your modifier stack, you're going to notice a problem. If you play your animation, you'll see how it starts working properly, but then this weird thing starts happening. And I think the, the problem here is that you have the empty pulling along all these vertices. And then again, you have the same empty parented to one of those vertices. So you have sort of like a cyclic relationship. So the animation introduced by the displace modifiers is affecting the empty. And then that empty again is back affecting those vertices, including the same vertex parented to it. So it creates sort of a feedback loop. So what I'm going to do to fix that, I'll just delete everything. Um, and then disable a modifier stack. So I'll go into edit mode and then zoom in to the tip of this branch and then select this loop and merge at the center. And then I'll do the same for this one and merge at the center. So the idea behind this is I want to make this end tip the parent of that empty and then for the hook modifier, I'll use the rest of the vertices 
and exclude the tip at the empty. So that way we avoid that um, feedback loop. So I'll just um, place a cursor, place the cursor there and create an empty, reduce its size, and then go into edit mode and make this vertex the parent. So control P, make vertex parent. And then excluding this um, vertex at the edge, I'll select all the vertices that I want to be influenced by that empty and then exclude this one and then control H hook to selected object. And if you now um, enable your animation, enable your modifier stack and play the animation, you'll see um, that avoids that feedback loop and it behaves as we expect it. And one more thing about the hook modifier is you'll notice that by default, Blender adds this modifier at the top of the stack. And this is because um, when you're using the hook modifier along with a modifier that adds geometry to your object, like the subsurf modifier, the, that modifier needs to come after the hook modifier. Otherwise, the new uh, geometry added will be ignored by the hook modifier. So to get this branch to interact with stuff, um, I have here um, some icospheres. And they're all uh, this, just the same object. And I'll maybe parent them to this uh, rotating empty, just so we can have some dynamic stuff going on. And then I'll select this empty. And then I'll, in the constraints tab, I'm going to add a shrink wrap constraint and use the target set the target to this icosphere. And you can see how this empty jumps to the closest point on the icosphere. And if you play animation, you'll see how it just jumps to the closest point on that surface. So that's how we get it to interact with um, stuff in the scene. The one limitation that I see is that um, this uh, shrink wrap, it only takes a single object as the target. It would have been awesome if it could take a collection. That way you could have different objects with different animations in them and have the same object interact. But yeah, this, uh, this still works. Uh, that's just the only limitation I see with this approach. So you can then go ahead and create the same uh, setup for all the other branches that you want to interact with. She don't want to link up, she evades. She evades. But shorty change her mind when she heard about my pace. Like I was done and under when I made shit. But I know God got me, so I'm ready when I made this. Made a couple errors, gotta face it. Face it. But really, I ain't tripping, I be tying up my laces. Up my Trapping laces. on a beat, I'm going ape shit. Think I'm blessed skin still, niggas kinda racist. Made a couple stacks and then I wasted. Waste I was still a young and tryna bow and I ain't made shit. Ain't made made shit. a couple friends, they helped me waste it. When I look around and I don't see him, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm wide awake, dreaming I'm a go-getter. Taking shots like a nigga with a vendetta. I wanna wear a sweater in the summer. And when you get this weird effect at the at the edge of the last uh, vertices that the hook modifier influences, you can play with the settings in the falloff to influence how gradual the effect of the hook modifier tapers off. So I like to use the sharp fall off type and then just play with uh, the radius until you have a spot where that artifact is not visible. And then if you play your animation, you'll see how, how that happens. And when you enable now all the modifier stacks, you can see how everything together looks so dynamic and it looks um, really, really cool. Now, when I'm creating the shape keys, for these vertices that are being influenced by these empties, I try not to move these branches around too much because if you move them too far from the original location, it can break that effect. But for the vertices and the branches, these smaller branches that are not being influenced and are not interacting, you have the freedom to change the map however you want and create those different variations and store them inside different shape keys. As you're creating the shape keys, try not to mess with the scale of things, especially on the vertices that are being influenced by the empties. Because uh, remember the hook modifier uh, is using uh, these distances in the fall off, is using specific uh, distances to calculate how far that influence reaches. 
And if you play around with the scale, if you scale things down or up, it can mess around with that distances and mess up your results. So the workflow for animating the shape keys remains pretty much the same. So you can see already the effect is jumping around, it's dynamic, and that's because it's interacting with the icospheres in the scene. I've just disabled them from the viewport. So to just um, exaggerate this effect, we're going to animate the shape keys. So I'll place a keyframe in key one, and then add a modifier. I'll add a noise modifier. And if you zoom in, you can see what that does. And then I'll add a limits modifier after that. And I'm going to check the maximum and minimum Y and set the maximum to one. So this just limits the values of the noise modifier between zero and one, because those are the limits of the value of the key. So if you increase the strength, you can see that the values are clipped at one. And then you can play with the scale to just exaggerate how fast or how slow you want, uh, you want it to be jumping between those shape keys. So with that done, I'll just copy those modifiers, select the key two, place a keyframe, and then select that curve and paste those modifiers, then use the phase to randomize those values. So just like that, you can see how it just helps to exaggerate that effect of how the electricity is dynamic and jumping around. So I'm going to do the same thing again to also the rotation of the object. So I'll place a keyframe in the X, Y, and Z rotations, and then select those curves and paste these modifiers while randomizing um, the phase. Just like that, you have an effect where the arc is jumping and rotating around in the scene, which is just really, really cool. And like I said, the only limitation I see with this effect is it's, it, it only interacts with a single object. If the shrink wrap uh, constraint could take a collection instead of a single object, it would be really easy to create an effect where... Um, the arcs are interacting with objects with different animations and you could create really complex effects. So if you know a way to get around that limitation, let us know down in the comments. So yeah, that's it for this video. And by the way, if you haven't seen um, all the cameos where the default cube uh, appears in my tutorials, I'll leave some links down in the descriptions where you can check them up. Check them out because there's something really exciting coming up pretty soon uh, so stay tuned for that one yeah so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one